Boys, girls, how are we? No, really, how are you? Did you get that rash cleared up? Good. All right, welcome to Brad's Guitar Garage, where all your dreams can come true, especially if you eat the mushrooms around the letterbox. Don't do that. Um, today we're, we, what's this we shit? I am finishing off this box, finally. Rebuilt half the thing. I just powered it up this morning. Well, I powered it up for the first time last night. And all seemed well. The tremolo I forgot to hook up the high voltage to, so the first three tubes didn't work the first go. I realized my error and wired that. <clears throat> I came up with a new grounding scheme, somewhat better than the original, so it's a bit quieter background hum wise than it was when it was new. So that's good. Uh, I've toned down the bias a little bit so it doesn't eat through tubes like nobody's business. And I might go a little bit further because when I was testing it this morning, it looked like it was running around 115-ish percent. Uh, about 95 is where we want to aim for for a cathode bias damp like this. Um, I've dialed back the... Well, I've changed the value of the cathode resistor from 50 ohms, which is standard, or 47, um, to 68. Uh, so I've toned it down quite a bit, as well as the screen grid resistors I've changed to 1.5 kilo ohm instead of 100 ohm. So that's toned it down a bit too, but we could go a little bit further just for future reliability. I know these things sound great when they're biased really hot, but we do want it to be reliable too, and it'll still sound great, so let's do it. Um, so first I'll fire it up. I do have to do a few little tweaks. Uh, I want to play with the range of the tremolo and vibrato, which I reconstructed. Someone had gutted it before that area um, and put a standby switch there for some stupid reason. So now that's gone. Uh, we don't need a standby switch. Um, I've put that back in with the stock values, um, but the range isn't very wide in terms of the, the speed of the tremolo and uh, vibrato. And it's, in my opinion, it's too fast. Um, so I might, that's pretty easy to adjust. It's just a couple of resistors. Um, so I might wait until the owner comes to check it out, check that he's got an arrow so up his sleeve and we'll, we'll play with some values there to get the range where he finds it sweet. Um, so I might do that. It's sort of a taste thing, so we might leave it till he's around. Um, I've checked all these coupling caps and they appear to be good, believe it or not. Um, these two, which are directly after the phase inverter. Tiny bit of leakage, bugger all, but it's probably gonna get worse as time goes on, so I'm gonna change them out. They're only 400 volt. Um, that's kinda on borderline once you're cranking this thing. Um, you gotta take into account that there is high tension on them. In this case, 340 something volts. But then there's also the signal swing on top of that. So they're only 400 volts, so you're getting pretty close to their uh, their rating there, if not over. So I'll change them to 630 volt. I've got some nice Panasonic ECQ series film caps there, five percenters. Um, I'll chuck them in. Everything else seems to be beautiful though. The new pots sound dead quiet. There's no scratchiness. So and I've checked that there's no DC on the pots uh, from leaking caps. So they're in good shape. Um, and they feel nice and smooth now. The thing's gonna be a joy to play after this. It's gonna be great. I've mounted some extra capacitance. Um, well, the original caps were the chassis mounted capacitors that had three sections in each, three capacitors in one can. You can't get them anymore, as I mentioned in the last video. So um, I used the dual section can caps, which you can get almost anywhere, uh, even in Australia, believe it or not. And uh, then I'll just use some garden variety um, axials in there as well, uh, which again, you can find pretty much anywhere. They're Nichicon, 450 volt rated. I uh, just tested it on full voltage and they're only pushing to 250 odds, so massively overrated. Uh, even the 
dual can caps are 500 volt but they're they're pushing 350 max maybe maybe 400 um when you first start it up before the uh before the the tubes conduct so i probably could have done with 450s there but eh whatever i don't think there's any difference in price anyway between the 450s and the 500s in the can caps there is in the axials as soon as you step up from 450 volts to 500 you can no longer go with the niche cons you've got to go over to f and t and they're like 15 to 20 bucks a capacitor which is it jacks up the price of a repair somewhat you usually only need them in the first first or second filtering stage of an amp though everything after that's below um yeah, you can damage them though. If you if you start your valve amp without any valves in it, there's no load and your voltage is sky high, and you can damage all the capacitors in your amp by doing that. I, I don't understand why on a lot of these uh, guitar repair groups they go oh when you first fire your amp up, fire it up and check your voltages before you put any tubes in, and they say any tubes, not just the outputs. Um, that's retarded because your voltages are going to be 200% high. So any measurements mean nothing. And you've got no load on the amp. So all your capacitors are probably going to exceed their voltage rating. So don't do that. Uh, and don't listen to forums. <laughs> oh, God. Anyway. So a few things I've got left to do is, yeah, tweak the, the tremolo side. Um... I've got to replace an odd jack here. It's got a, uh, let's be careful not to electrocute myself. That thing is live. It's not on, but it's live. Um, someone's replaced the cliff style with a, like a Marshall style one at some point. So I want to change that over to, to, to make it match the rest and how it originally was. Um, just trying to remember what else have I got to do <laughs> besides play with the bias. Um, I was thinking about putting a foot switch jack in to turn on and off the tremolo and vibe. But again, I'll, I'll check with the customer before I go ahead with that. He'll probably like it because he is a performer and it would be nice not to have to literally go over and shove your frigging guitar into another jack or use a AB box to go between the two channels. He might want to do that. That's another option. Um, that way you're not modifying the amp, even though I've kind of modified it anyway to get the thing reliable. Um, it's better than stock though, mate. It's been to Brad's Guitar Garage. So yeah. Um, oh, one of my meters just turned off. Do you like my uh, my fluke display here? It's just as a bit of a bit of a boast. I need another one, I reckon. That one's the odd one out. I've had that since I was about 16, if that. Um, these 175 and 179s, they're, they're tops. I might get another one of them. That one's gone out of calibration too. I could play with, with adjusting and whatever, but... I don't know. Do that when I've got some spare time, eh? Anywho, on with the show. So, let's fire it up. Do a few measurements. So, I'll turn these things on again. And explain what I'm measuring. <clears throat> Alright, so here I have... That's just these leads here, just in case I want to check anything. Um, what I might do is shove them in the front of the variac just to show what the mains voltage is. Um, for the moment because I've checked critical voltages and nothing's way out of range so I don't need the leads free so I'll shove that in the variac so that'll be the mains voltage coming into it which I've got adjustable because variac uh, AC voltage that's the heaters uh, just to check them that there is the voltage across the cathode resistor so that will tell us the bias and that is the B plus that's the plate voltage on the output stage um, you can see there, cap slowly draining from when I turned it on last. It's at five volts at the moment, so let's do it, eh? So I'll flick this one onto AC. It's upside down, but you know you can use your imagination. We'll fire it up. I've got it plugged into my crappy test speaker under the bench here. Probably should get a slightly nicer one so I can test sort of tone wise out in this crappy sounding garage before I drag it inside and test it in my nicer room there with a nicer cabinet. 
Um, that thing just sounds really tinny and shit, and it's just a generic crappy speaker um, in an open back little plywood box. So I will just test through that. I mainly use it for testing um, just background noise, weird noises, and just to see if something's way off the mark in what it should be doing. Um, it's good for that, and I don't care if I blow it up because it's a generic, generic crappy little speaker. So, we can hear the tone start and come in there. I've got 400 hertz sine wave running into it. I'm going into the vibe channel at the moment, or tremolo and vibe channel. So you can hear there. It's a little bit wobbly. That's that's the vibe. Vibrato. Oh. Yeah, vibrato. I always get the two mixed up. That's the vibrato. And then that's just, just straight up tremolo. So that there has got a phase shift to it with capacitor network um, sort of gives a slight pitch variation whereas that one there is just straight up amplitude modulation so that's the switch between the two modes that was it looks like it's been replaced but not by me and the switch is still fine I did test it so it's still working okay um, and then here is the speed switch and I'll show you it's got three positions which the stock one did that's the slowest and that's pretty fast. That's the medium. And that's the fast. So there's not a hell of a lot of range there. I'd like to see half that speed and double that speed, ideally. So I'll play with some values there. Uh, so that, yeah, that's the, the tram vibe channel. Go into the middle one, which is the normal channel. That's Let's give it a square wave for a sec. That's the cut control. Sounds like the uh Treble and the bass aren't doing a hell of a lot. I'll check that out. Play through a guitar just to get a vibe of what, that, what that's doing. And this is the brilliant of the bright channel. Okay, so that, that tone control there has more of an effect on the bright channel. Let's have a look at the schematic. Uh, that's because it's only affects the bright channel. There you go. Duh. I've been working on the thing for a couple of weeks and I only just noticed that. <laughs> Jesus. Anyway. So I'm only running at around 150 volts at the moment mains. So that's no good for check and bias. Let's crank her up to 240. You can see all the voltages changing there. Alright, we're 220, 230, we'll go to 240, bang on, set our measurements for that. So we've got th about 350 um, B+, plus. we've got 11.5 across the cathode resistor. And we've got about 6.4 volts AC on the heaters, which is good. Um, so let's run with 350 volts. Let's jack it up till we get about 245, because that's what our, about our mains here is. So we're, we're talking on average 350 volts. Yeah. About, we'll go 355 just to be safe when we set our bias. So um, let's calculate that. I'll just use the um, Rob Robinette page again. It's good stuff. So we'll choose our tube. We've got EL84s, plate to cathode voltage, which I'll measure. All right, let's check that out. Set it to DC. 
put the negative on the cathode and positive on the B plus. 340, say 341. 341 volts, plate to cathode, calculate. We've got four valves sharing that one cathode resistor, and we've got 11.9 volts DC across that resistor, and the resistor is 68 ohms. So that means we're running at 117.5% plate dissipation, which is too high. Um, we should be running at cathode bias, 90% average, 33.4. Um, milliamps per valve and at the moment we're running at 41.4 uh, so yeah we've got to cool it down a bit so let's do that power it down let it let the caps drain turn off the mains unplug it we're already down to 5 volts 4 volts as the caps discharge, because the valves are still hot, they're still conducting. Um, so the valves themselves are actually draining the caps there, more or less. Um, you can put a bleeder resistor over them as well, just to be safe. <sighs> so is anyone watching? One person, fully sick. <laughs> All right, so we're drained. It's rising back up again as the caps recover, but no biggie. I'll just disconnect some of this gear because I've got to get in there. Reconnect it all later. Life support system. Ah, oh, wires everywhere, man. Look at that, spaghetti. Now you might notice down here I've got a uh, got a light under the bench. That's a hundred watt halogen aimed directly at my nuts because it's friggin' cold out here. <laughs> Anything you gotta do to be comfortable. Warm my hands on the valves. Oh yeah. Just piss off the signal generator. Might get rid of the meters. Got to do a bit of, a little bit more work, physical stuff. So uh, we'll clean up a bit. I'll hang on to the one meter that's just got the probes attached in case I've got to test anything. So I want to flick it back over to the power amp side. Which I think you guys had a pretty good look at last time, but there it is in all its glory. blocks under there. So what I want to do is change out this 10 watt resistor for a 100 ohm one. If I got one, that's a good point. Yes, I do. Close call. <laughs> 
So I want to stick one of these on there, just to swap it out and cool down the bias a bit. Probably only bias a couple of milliamps, but uh, every little bit counts. I'm probably going to melt some cables here, and that sucks because that means I've got to replace them. Yeah, melted the shit out of it. Let's try and quickly pull these out before the jackets melt Get it up too well. Grab the needle noses. Probably just snip this resistor. It is new, but um, once you've bent the leads a few times, you can't really reuse them again because they'll just snap. Let's do that. Only a three or four bucks worth. What's that in the scheme of things on a box, eh? Bugger all. Cutting off the excess wire. Got to poke your tongue out when you do stuff like this. Just until you remember you're on video. <laughs> now, a little bit of wire went flying then, uh, and that might short something out later, so I've got to find that. There it is. You can see there that, that Nichicon, Nichicon capacitor I'll put in. Just that axial. I've just used one of those um, cable ties with a little screw fitting on the end of it. Fully sick, bro. Alright, so I've got to fit from that terminal to that terminal. I have to do some lead bending artwork. Too far. Yeah, that's about right. I'll do my little kink trick. So it doesn't go flying through the uh, tag strip. Excess off the lead. 
Probably won't wrap it around a million times this time. It's a bit of an overkill. Getting shaky, it must be lunchtime. <laughs> Time for a burrito. This really is fiddly. All right, it's more or less sitting in there without solder, and that's what you want. You just want the solder to make the connection, not the uh, mechanical support. Otherwise, it will crack. Leaded solder is not as bad as uh, not as bad as lead free, but still. Jesse, what do you reckon? 75 ohm cathode resistor to cool it down. Yeah, I, in past experience, I think there'll be stuff all the difference between the 68 and the 75. Uh, so I'm just going straight for 100. This is probably, this transformer is set up for 230 volt mains, or it might be 240. It says it on the front. Yeah, it's 240, yeah. But um, old tubes probably cocked, copped it, cocked it. <laughs> old tubes probably copped it on the chin, whereas the new ones don't like it so much. But you probably know that. You play with amps, eh? I'll just put a dab of solder on there to lock that in, but not fully fill the... Uh, the eyelet. Uh, now this lead here, which goes to the cathodes. Oh, sorry, no, it doesn't. Yeah, it does, yeah, sorry. Uh, I reckon I'll be able to reuse that. I've just got to take a bit, a bit more of the insulation off it. Just too short. Fuck me, dead. Like by fucking two mil too short. Fuck that. Something always goes wrong on videos.
because I've fed it under the board. Now it's a pain in the ass to remove. Feed it under the board this time. It's a bit silly. All right. Any wire time. Time consuming amp in the world. Fucking boxes. These tag strips are a real pain in the ass. They're, they're little hooks, they're not they're not eyelets, so you can't just feed the wire through it. You've gotta hold it there, try and hold the fucking thing there while you solder it. Because it just falls out of the hook. I'll still go under the board, but not through the through the tag strip. I'll just go under. No. Just pinch the wire. Try again. As soon as you melt the solder, the wire is useless because the jacket melts. Turn the temp down, I think. 320. A bit of blue tack there. Hold the wire while I tin it. Now the fucking thing's blocked again. Every fucking time. Where'd my wire go? On the floor.
man, these things are fiddly, eh? Wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy working on these bloody things. cathode connection to the resistor Again, we want sort of a mechanical connection there before we go and solder it. Make our main earth connection. Alright, cathode resistor installed at 100 ohm. <sighs> what the hell? What else were we doing? <laughs> Shut up, dogs. Uh, resistor, the jack on the front, and what else was there? Change out the coupling caps on the uh, phase inverter. Point one five, point one five microfarad stock. Dogs in the street, are, all the dogs in the street are barking. So there's probably a uh, dickhead walking around trying to sell shit. Get a real job.
think I was right there. I can hear someone walking around the front yard. What's going on? Get your phone out. Uh, right, coupling caps. Oh, got two of the wrong type here. Got two at six thirty volt. Shut up, dogs. Yeah. Disconnect these ones. Where are my tweezers? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, need some fresh solder and jack that temperature up a bit. It's way too cold. Old solder goes really crappy and it develops like a coating of, of oxides on it. It's a real pain in the ass. Turns to cheese. Funny looking caps, aren't they? Molded plastic. Wonder if they're stock. They don't look like the rest of them. They've probably already been replaced once. It looks like there's a couple of burns on them as well from whoever replaced them.
see there, someone's melted it. And they were trying to solder it. A little chip missing there. They're probably probably rolling around in someone's parts drawer for decades and just popped it in here. Go. It's a bit nicer, isn't it? Here we go there. Panasonic film caps. Poly something thing. You know that stuff. See what I mean about the hooks? You chuck your part in there. It sits upright and then just pops out of the hook. As soon as you let go, it falls down. Bit of shit. So you've got to gently solder one end. Been pretty quick with the heat. Then fine tune it with the other end. Sort of like tack welding before you do the final seam in metalwork. Got to get in and out pretty quick with the heat on film caps because being that all they really are is aluminium film between two layers of plastic, uh, you can melt through that plastic insulation pretty easily if you uh, sit there too long with the soldering iron. So try and get in, get in and out pretty quick and uh, try not to damage them. I don't know how much of the background noise you can hear here with that mic. I've got a compressor on it, but um, you've got it all at the moment. You've got jet aircraft, you've got dogs, and you've got kookaburras. Australia. All right, before I stuff around with the jack, let's just check that we're in the ballpark for the bias again, so I'll have to set all up, up all the meters again. Uh, might not, I might just use the meter, the single one.
I'll just connect the one meter on the high tension there to show us the cathode to plate voltage. So I'm measuring from the cathode of, well, the combined cathodes of the four output valves to the B plus. And then chuck this one in for the mains again. May as well go, go all out again. That on AC. Plug in my speaker, which is eight ohms. So plug it into the eight ohm output. Duh. And I'll need to know the voltage drop across that cathode resistor too. I'll connect another probe for that. All right, so that's my mains. That's my cathode plate. And that's my cathode resistor. Um, we ready? Just double check everything. Yet 98.9. That's the new resistor we just put in. <laughs> it's all happening. Sorry about my bald head there. All right, let's do it. confused Frequency setting. Idiot. All right. Where were we? Drawing about 30 watts. Starting to conduct. Give it some signal to sell that all as well. Turn it down when we're taking a bias measurement though, just, just we're after a resting state quiescent bias measurement. Alright, let's jack her up. 240. We go 245 like we did before. So let's enter our new measurements once, once everything settles down. All right, so 
we've got plate cathode has gone up a bit because we've reduced the load on the output stage so there's less current draw so therefore things will sit a bit higher voltage so we'll go 347 that's what's reading here because it's taken from the cathode to the plate EL84 yeah correct tube four tubes sharing a cathode resistor that's still the case we didn't install any new tubes <laughs> Uh, voltage across cathode resistor has gone up because it's a higher resistance 13.3 and now we're sitting at 100 ohms calculate and we've come down to 90 90.8 so we've probably gone a bit far we could probably back it off to yeah you're probably right Jesse 75 <laughs> maybe 82 I don't think I've got any 82s in 10 watt at the moment. Nah, all I've got 68s and 100s. Look, I'll send it out at that, because often we, we approach 250 volts here. Uh, let's just test it at 250. Oh, I'm sitting at 250 now. Enter our bullshit again, 356, so that's gone up a bit. Oh, the internet's really slow. Four tubes, 13.8, seven, whatever, 96. So yeah, if we go up to, we're aiming for 95. If the mains are sitting at 240-ish, we'd probably be around 90. Uh, well, what was it, 245? before so from 245 to 250 we're almost going up seven percent so i think where we're at is about right so yeah boom um it's probably cooled down a little bit too uh because the coupling caps were leaking a little bit bugger all but could have made a bit of a difference so i think bias wise and output stage wise we're right where we need to be that's good. All I've got to do now is replace the jack and play with the speed of the vibe and trim. And we're home and hosed. Then I'm going to do the stupid cabinet. Well, it's not stupid, I'm just not looking forward to it. <laughs> I'll get it polished off today, but it's not going to be a very entertaining video, so I won't video that one. So, anyway, thanks for watching me. And uh, this one was a little bit boring, so I might edit it for the YouTube for the YouTubes, because um, I know everyone's got a three second attention span these days, so, so do I. Anyway, thanks for watching.